Okay, Mark meets Ed Hornby, Director of Digital Delivery at VCCP. Hi, Ed. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. You okay? Pretty good, thanks. Um, can you give us a very quick summary of your entire career today? <clears throat> My entire career, okay. Uh, I went to university, uh, did uh, studied industrial design. Which university? At uh, Brunel University. Uh, that was uh, a four year course, uh, and a lot, a lot of it was to do with uh, computer generated design, so computer aided design, as we called it in those days. Uh, and that's what piqued my interest in digital media and, you know, and that kind of stuff. Because at that time, we're going back some years, and I graduated in, I think, 93. And it was at that time that uh, Apple were developing a piece of software called Hypercard into. Uh, uh, into its next generation, also a company called, I can't remember what they're called, it's like Macromind, Macromedia, they're called the time we're doing director, and that just came out. Uh, and so that sort of area was of, of interest to me. And so after university, after a, uh, uh, about a year of doing not very much, um, started to work for a, a multimedia company called uh, Howard Multimedia Network uh, and developed CD ROMs for them. Howard Multimedia? Yeah, Australian company. <laughs> okay. uh, Run by a chap called uh, Howard, Howard. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was there for about I guess about four years. I was employee number three, I think I was, um, and we grew into a twenty-five person uh, entity uh, developing CD-ROMs. It was one of the first uh, CD-ROMs of its type, where it was a huge database of online, of, sorry, of online of uh, university courses, and, and what have you. And we built multimedia stuff into that. It was, it was quite. Groundbreaking. That's bought out, or they bought UCAS and uh, just UCAS bought the products and used it on their big books. So if you know the, the UCAS books of courses for undergraduates. So that's, that was that, and then after that, I got into an agency called uh, Online Magic. Um, who were based in Kings Cross, about I don't know, forty odd people at that time. Not a great name, Online Magic. Yeah, well, they were great, and, and um, they were working with another agency called Agency.com at the time to deliver the British Airways uh, online um, stuff. So you know, the website and online marketing hadn't really kicked off in any great form at that stage since now, 97, 98. Um, so I was there and worked on British Airways for a few years. Uh, online Magic became Agency.com uh, at the time they merged, um, floated on NASDAQ went up massively high and then crashed all the way down to the bottom again uh, in 2000. Um, and uh, it was around that time I then moved to a company called Sapiens. Uh, Were you affected by redundancy at the time? or uh, oh, not, not at agency.com, no. It was, uh, although I think they did lay people off as every agency did yeah. around that time, around 2000. So, um, so, yeah, so when I left agency, there were about, I don't know, 350 people there or something. So it had grown massively at that time. It was a huge sort of bubble era. <clears throat> um, went to Sapien for a couple of years, did get laid off from Sapien, um, so they were sort of two years behind everyone else. Uh, after delivering some huge banking sites and stuff like that, just kind of interesting, but not really my cup of tea. Big design and build environment. Exactly, yeah, so systems integration and that kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> great experience to do, um, but, but not that interesting uh, on the long term anyway. Um, so then after that I contracted for a bit, back at agency.com, went on some other agencies uh, and then uh, went back into agency.com full time uh, and then after several years there, I think about four or five years at agency.com, we did BT and BA and uh, Labricks and PNG and various others. Uh, went to Ogilvy um, and then went from Ogilvy to uh, Trident DDB. Um, anyway, yeah. And then from there, I went to BBH, and then from BBH, I'm, I'm here at VCCP. Um, One thing you haven't spoken about is job titles. Right. So, when took me through the progression of job titles over the years. <clears throat> so, from I guess from Online Magic, which was the first agency I was in, um, I went as a project manager. Left the first time there as a senior project manager, was kind of a project director in, in today's kind of speak, I suppose. Uh, and then, uh, for the next sort of four or five years, I was in that sort of senior project management role. Then, when I went back to agency.com and became uh, director of 
uh, delivery operations, um, which is it's an overall delivery, so not just um, around project management itself, but the overall delivery process and the operations of the agency itself as well. Of course. Uh, and that's really what I've been doing since then, with the exception of Trident DDB, where I set up project management. Okay, so BCCP are probably best known for being an ad agency, um, and your role is director of digital delivery. What, what, what does that mean? <clears throat> yeah, good question. Uh, it, it means um, looking after, in, in a very broad sense, all of, all of digital delivery, and, and, and by that I mean uh, any uh, piece of work that we deliver that's uh, what you'd call a digital piece of work, so anything from a banner ad to a website uh, to a mobile app. Uh, to a, an interactive screen in a, in a O2 shop. Uh, that's all delivered out of the uh, digital department, which is as of my domain. For them. So, if any of the departments, i.e., VCCP Me, VCCP Health, VCCP yeah. Content, if that's digital, does that come under your remit, or is it more VCCP Digital Project? Um, a bit of both. We do a lot of work with health and, and VCCP Me and search and all the other guys. Um, they have some of their own um, resources and people within their teams to do some of their digital type delivery. Uh, but certainly for the bigger piece of the work, they'll, they'll work with us to do that. So you graduated in industrial design, yep. which I imagine is quite a fairly creative degree. Mm. How did you end up in, I guess, project managing rather than <coughs> being a creative yourself? Right. Um, yeah, well, so industrial design is kind of very similar to what, what we're now doing here in terms of digital design and it, it takes a very creative view of something that's innately technical um, and detailed. So you're combining two sort of opposite ends of a spectrum which is something that being very creative but also being very executional and, and, and technical, so combining technique with, with uh, uh, creativity. Um, and that's the same in a lot of creative pursuits but particularly you know, digital site development, for example, if you're designing and building an app, um, the idea is as important as an execution. And I think it's the combination of those two things that, that interests me the most. And I think being, a, being in project management, you're at the centre of that. And you're bringing it all together to try and combine those different elements to make something that's, uh, that's good, ultimately. Obviously, being a digital specialist and you've been doing digital and multimedia and online and interactive and web, whatever it's been called over the years. Yeah. Um, do you, how do you find the differences between working in a pure play digital agency versus an ad agency? Um, <clears throat> I think that all agencies are different, um, whether they're integrated or uh, you know, above the line or, or, or a pure play digital one. Um, I think advertising agencies are, have a few advantages over pure play digital agencies. The main one, of course, being size. Uh, and access to very, compared to some digital agencies, some very big budgets. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that helps if you're trying to, uh, to get into doing some big and interesting project work. So due to cross-selling, there are bigger opportunities with bigger budgets to cross-sell in an ad agency? I think, that, yeah, I think that's true. And I think uh, the opposite side to that, though, you know, to, to balance that out, ad agencies are obviously, there's a lot to do that's advertising. So it's not all about products and services or entertainment or you know, entertainment utility as some people call it. You know, often there is a, a, a commercial message that needs to be put out there. And the online sort of media bit through banner ads and email or whatever uh, is, is used to deliver that. Um, so the advertising element itself is slightly different. So perhaps a lot of, uh, a lot of the work that some of the digital agencies would do certainly these days. Anyway. So when you first entered the industry, kind of going back 15 years or so, um, CD-ROMs were a multimedia was the industry and you've seen a hell of a lot of changes over the years uh, and obviously technology is changing daily. Where do you see the industry in the next 10 or 15 years from now? <coughs> um, yeah, who knows? It is the honest answer but I'm not sure that anyone does know. I think we will have theories on that. But ultimately this is a an industry based on change, uh, and you know the best agencies are the ones that are geared to change. You, know, you can you can be the best agency delivering a mobile app, 
on iOS platforms, or, you know, but that'll change in a year or two's time. That's going to be irrelevant because it'll be something else. So ultimately, um, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're all just trying to be an agency where you can change very quickly uh, to suit to meet the, the demands of customers and everything else. So in terms of where we'll be, clearly, I think uh, mobile is going to be uh, have overtaken everything that we've been doing. And the idea of sitting in front of a a computer that's on a desk to do the things that you do on it, or most of the things that you do on it now, will just seem ridiculous in terms of time. It'll be just pervasive around you and you know, everywhere. So. Um, there are many arguments that uh, digital specialists like yourself um, have found it frustrating working with <coughs> people even today in 2013 that don't necessarily get digital. Right. Um, obviously, you've worked with native digital people and yeah. non-native digital people, do you find it frustrating or do you find it a challenge or how do you find working with people that have different levels <coughs> of digital understanding? Um, I don't think, that, I certainly don't find it frustrating, I think that's that's part of what you do. I think you know, anyone who, who says that they know everything about digital is lying because no one could possibly know everything about digital. So, you know, to, to be successful in, the, in this industry you need to have that, that point of view of of just wanting to learn and help, and your success is dependent on everyone else's as well, um, as is there somebody else. So, you know, the, the idea of, uh, of being collaborative uh, and, and creative in a, within a group of people is really important if you want to succeed in doing great digital work. Um, and that includes people who don't necessarily have a, a background in digital. Um, you know, we all, we all live in the same world, we all can have good ideas, you know, whether they're relevant to digital or not, and bring your lives together is important. Obviously, digital has been it has been treated differently to other medias over the past five, six, seven years. Um, would you say people that have digital experience are more valuable or more hireable these days? <clears throat> uh, it's hard to say. I think what I would say is that getting some good digital people is quite hard these days. And good native digital people. Yeah, good native digital people. Who, because you know, I talked before about merging you know, creativity with technology, and it's the same in terms of people's characters too in this industry. So you need to be two things at the same time. You need to be very creative and open, and just coming up with very you know, broad ideas and, uh, and what have you. But at the same time, you need to be really buttoned down and professional and executional, and be awesome at some kind of craft, be it design or coding, or, you know, or at least have an understanding of that. And it's it's finding people who can do both of those things and operate in both of those areas and the people who make the, the, the best sort of digital uh, employees, I suppose, or digital people. I've noticed that digital delivery uh, and production has grown hugely um, in the past few years and the rise of the digital production agency uh, has exploded <coughs> in the past couple yeah. of years. Um, agencies like Parata and Institute. Um, and Tag and Hogarth and those guys are, are crazy busy. Yeah. Um, how important is outsourcing digital delivery or production to an environment like VCCP or to the to the kind of state of the digital? Uh, it's really important because uh, if if any of us are doing our jobs properly, and I mean agencies, um, then we should be coming up with ideas. But not limited by what you can deliver in house. And I think a lot of, certainly in the past, digital agencies might have been guilty of doing that. Um, so you, you need to have the holes of digital world in front of you to, uh, and use that whole sort of range, spectrum of different technologies and processes and ways of working um, to deliver what, what's best for your clients. You can't possibly do that with an in house team. You can, you can set up um, certain projects or campaigns or products and services that use their technology and build a team to deliver that on an ongoing basis, which is why we have an internal team here at VCCP. But also, we're constantly looking at other ways to do things, and for that we need to use um, external production agencies because they would have a specialism that we don't have. What's, what's your argument with freelancers, bringing in freelancers and creating a team that can produce the ideas that maybe the skill sets full-time in-house you don't have? Versus outsourcing. Um, there are there are a lot of arguments around that, and, and you sort of mentioned one when you're asking the question. Creating a team to deliver something is, takes 
time and there are risks around that and often as we, as we know clients can be pretty demanding uh, and there are very tight turnaround times and you need to get things done. Using a, a ready-made team to do that um, is usually a, a sensible way of doing that. Um, there's also an important point that's often sort of overlooked but when you're delivering a, a piece of work for a client, digital piece of work, when you've actually deployed it and delivered it, there's a whole lot of work still to do. You know, managing it, updating it, maybe there's some content management um, considerations and so on. <clears throat> um, if you use freelancers, they're usually gone by the time it's launched, and, and then when there are things to do to it, you're kind of stuck. So that knowledge base walks out the door. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, you, with the best one in the world, you try and keep it in house, but um, if, particularly if it's a specialist technology, it's quite difficult to do that sometimes. Unless you're going to be doing a lot of it and you hire the right people to enable that. But using external agencies, obviously, they're there to still support what you've done. There's a perception in digital that um, to be successful, you need to be passionate about digital, generally, about platforms, <coughs> technologies, future communication uh, strategies, yeah. all sorts of different stuff. Um, what, like, what, what's your view on, on people working in digital? Do, you, do, you, do they have to be engrossed in the industry outside of work? Um, so they have to have a natural passion and interest in I think you have to have a natural passion that's true in everything though isn't it I think, uh, I think if you have that natural passion you know, being engrossed in something sounds like it requires a lot of effort but I think you would naturally be that um, but I think and, and I think you, you, you'll like that because we're working in a constantly changing environment so, whereas if you, I don't know, if you were a building surveyor or something, you know, you'd probably spend a lot of time knowing about different materials that you can use in the building of uh, the block of flats and how you do that. And, you know, that technology is, is, it changes for sure, but it's not, it doesn't change as rapidly as uh, you know, online web technologies, for example, or mobile technologies, so which you can continue to change. You can do more and more different things all the time. So, for us to be able to be good at our jobs, which is a natural inclination for anyone, then I think you will be sort of immersed in, in this changing technology the whole time. Yeah, I mean, the reason I ask that question is because there are lots of people over the years that have worked in direct marketing, sales promotion, uh, who don't take their interest or passion for that particular marketing yeah. or media yeah. output any further than their day, their day to their day today right. working. Okay. Obviously, with digital. Um, like you said, with technologies changing and augmented reality and QR codes and all sorts of different things, uh, it does seem like people have more of an interest, more of an engagement with their media in digital as opposed to other marketing platforms. Yeah, <clears throat> I suppose that's yeah, I mean, that is, that's, that's certainly true. But I would say that if you're from another background, to be it direct marketing or whatever, I think there are still a lot of skills. Um, and sort of cultural norms, I suppose, that are the same. Uh, and I think if you're, if you're interested in getting into digital as, a, as an area, whether being an agency or as well, then apart from having presumably a natural interest in it anyway, um, you're going to be working with a bunch of people who uh, might seem to know a lot, but generally will be willing and able to share it quite happily and readily. Um, particularly if you go to the right agencies where, where they have that kind of culture. As part of the hiring and recruitment process within your team, yeah. um, do you make sure that everyone has a digital footprint before you hire them? I.e., do they have a presence on Facebook and have right. an idea of how Facebook works to be selling a Facebook solution to a client? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. And, uh, I wouldn't say it was a prerequisite, um, but I think it would depend on the job and, and the role that we had in mind to do that. Certainly for the people that I hire day to day, which are production staff, um, then it might not be that important that they have a blog or you know, a Facebook page or that they know how to build an app or <laughs> you know, design an interface and do whatever they do. Um, so no, there's no set rule about uh, if, you're, if you're coming to VCSP as a planner, you must have a blog that's active, you must you know, have a Twitter uh, account and you update twice a day. 
those kind of uh, criteria don't exist as far as I know. Because it's becoming more common in agencies now for, as part of the hiring process, to check out someone's digital footprint yeah. um, before offering them a job. Um, and, and, and of course, people's online profile and personality and how they're perceived is important. A lot, yeah, of, people, a lot of people forget that actually it's accessible to the public. To everyone. Yeah. 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 It, it's really important. I mean, having just said it's not a prerequisite. If, if you've got one and it is active and it's good and interesting, then it's going to help massively. You know, there's no question of that. Having those, those online profiles that are, um, uh, as I say, are active and interesting will put you a step ahead of everyone else. That's true. As someone that's a thought leader uh, in digital and you've been doing it for a long time, uh, are you, is that something you're constantly aware of, is what your online profile it perceives you to be? <clears throat> for example, if you put a drunk photo, if a drunk photo ends up online, is that something that you're conscious of as a digital leader? Uh, I suppose I would be, yeah. I don't think any drunk photos we put up recently, but um, yeah, I, for sure I'd be conscious of that. I think uh, that's likely if it was at all to be done on, on Facebook, isn't it? But, uh, you know, just make sure your security is up to scratch. Because I think there are a lot of people entering the industry today who are very conscious of mm. how they want to be perceived online, right. and there are um, agencies that are checking out how active people are online before hiring them. Um, but I'm, I was just interested to find out for people that have been in the industry for a long time if it's still something that they consider to be important for themselves or whether it. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I don't use my online profile that much, um, but I use other people's in the sense that I, you know, I'm constantly learning stuff online from other people. And, and, and if we're hiring people, then certainly looking at their you know, LinkedIn and, and what have you, if they've got a Twitter feed, looking at if they've got a blog, even better. Just to get a, a feel for what they're like, and if they have those things, and um, assuming it's not full of, sort of dodgy material, then you know it's going to help a lot. Of this what advice would you give to people that are looking to work in the digital in the digital <laughs> department within VCCP? Uh, what do people have to do to stand out and kind of get their foot in the door here? I think um, you need to be uh, uh, sort of. I'm mean, going to probably sound like everyone else here, but being tenacious and ingenious uh, in the sense that you can make something out of relatively little or nothing uh, are two very important attributes. Um, you know, the, we're, we have the sort of unusual uh, situation within VCCP anyway, of, or, and it has in any ad agency in the digital department, it tends to be one of the earliest departments, if not the earliest department, that actually makes stuff. You know, beyond doing design work, for example, um, and that automatically makes you different you know, in a creative agency. Um, and you're going to have some some interesting interactions with the, with the other people in the agency who are used to often working with you know, external suppliers and production agencies who are climbing over each other to get the work from you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as a as a digital team within an agency, you're, you're taking often ideas that are not fully thought through or perhaps are flawed in some way, um, but making the most and the best of them and, and, and perhaps change it around so they make them really good based on what we know and what we can do uh, technically. Okay. okay, let's move on to a quick fire round. Okay. Can line or DNA D pencil? Can line. Olympic gold medal or an Oscar? Uh, Olympic gold medal. The brightest person that you've worked with? Uh, Andy Hosborn, probably. The most creative person you've worked with? Uh, John Hegarty. And the best looking person you've worked with? Uh, Nigel Bogle. <laughs> <laughs> Creatives or suits? Uh, Creatives. Money or happiness? <coughs> happiness. Apple or Android? Apple. Degree or no degree? Degree. Art directors or copywriters? Both always. <laughs> retained work or pitch work? Uh, retained. Web or mobile? Uh, 
My club group both the same. Facebook or Twitter? Uh, Twitter. Independent agencies or networked agencies? Both have their uses. <laughs> Outsource production or on-site production? Uh, always both, hybrid. Don Draper or Roger Sterling? Uh, Don Draper. And lastly, twist or stick? Uh, always twist. Thank you very much. Thank you.